it's not about the food. And this may seem ironic because my mission as a chef is to educate, entertain, and inspire wellness. From cancer support centers to corporate wellness programming, I blend culinary arts with nutrition and I teach conscious cooking as a remedy for personal health. Now, to put this into perspective, we don't need morbid statistics. What we need is more time and as much time as possible with the people that we love. Before we take care of others, we need to learn to take care of ourselves. That became apparent to me when I was at my physical and mental worst about 10 years ago. And it was an aha moment in a doctor's office when he wanted to prescribe the same medication that my grandfather was on at the time in order to treat my ailments. Something about this didn't feel right, and I knew there had to be another way. And there was. For the last 10 years, I've been focusing on real food as the key to changing lives. But after thousands of cooking classes and cooking demonstrations in front of thousands of people, I've had a profound realization. It's not about the food. See, food is just the medium, but the experiences that I create with it, this is my art form. See, when I gather a group together and we cook healthy food, that's not the only thing that happens. I engage them in creative activities like storytelling, trivia, and even role-playing and acting. Definitely not any Oscar nominations, but we're working on that. <laughs> but through these interactions, what's amazing is people's walls come down, and I create a connectedness that happens through compassion and creativity. And this is where perspective starts to change. Isn't it ironic that we live in a time where communication is instant, yet some of us are the most lonely and isolated and even disenfranchised we've ever been? See, when we cook together, it's what we learn about each other that helps us rediscover ourselves. This is community. And with this, we don't just nourish our bodies, we nourish our souls. And isn't that enough to justify the time and effort that we complain about to prepare a home-cooked meal with our friends or our loved ones? And better yet, isn't this enough to justify passing up the drive through at least one time in a week? When we're in groups, there's an instant support and accountability that happens. And it reminds us that we're not stuck or bound to the lifestyle that we're living right now, and it's never too late to reinvent ourselves. Cooking and the food that it yields is the oldest form of communication in the world, and it transcends all barriers, political, social, ethnic, and especially language barriers. And in a time where there's so much conflict in the world, there is a lot to be said about the joy and the generosity that comes from a simple meal prepared in good company. So what could we learn about this? Well, for starters, it's not about a magic bullet, all right? It's not about an all or nothing diet, and it is certainly not about doing it on your own. As we move forward, and we take on more global challenges relating to health and to food, we need to take back our health together and we need to do that in the kitchen. It's not about the food. It's about people. See, food does have the power to change lives, but not by itself. It needs an instrument, and that instrument is us. Thank you.